Hello again, this is David, and we are going to continue now with our basic setup tutorial with uh, learning about location, particularly low frequency or LF beacon based location. What we have here, in addition to the ELC controller, the junction box, and the tag, we have two LF beacons. To use the LF beacons, we need to, of course, connect them to the network and also set up their ID using the DIP switches on board. So let's first open up the, uh, the beacon themselves. I've already loosened the screws. And uh, over here we've got the ID. You get them from the factory with all of the DIP switches on the on position. So I'm going to turn uh, the least significant or bits uh, six five, six, seven, and eight, I'm going to turn them down, leaving one, two, three, and four up. That'll give me an F0. And uh, let's do the other one as well. And we're going to turn the, this one, we're going to turn up uh, one, two, three, four, and the number eight. So this is going to be F, and this is going to be F1. Okay. We're going to leave them with the lids off for now and take the cable, connect it up. Okay, so if we're going to connect first this device, you can see that we've already set the range to this to the minimum range, and now we need to enroll it in Iris. We go to Readers, Add by Type, and grab an ALC can do either identify with tamper and then we can tamper the master and, the ma and it will send any bus devices that may have come online. So we're going to use the spring on the, on the ALC and check off the device and OK. So now we've got uh, an ID, a device ID for this new bus device, this LF beacon. So let's look at the complete, complete, complete and finally Probably complete, so we have online in blue, just like any other. Okay, it beeps nicely. So we've got LF beacon number one. Let's give it a name. We're going to call it left beacon, or let's say left door, a little bit more realistic. If we look in the extended properties here, we'll see that it's F0, right? F0, we said it and it's showing the LFID as being F0. Now let's do the same thing for the other. We're going to hook it up again to the junction box. We could have hooked it directly to the controller. But uh, this way it's a little bit more organized having a junction box. And we can do add by type. And this time we'll do a network scan. The blue one is the one that's available. Add by time. We do apply. And we're going to call it, once it's completed, the right door. Okay, that's all complete. And we're going to do right door. Okay, so now we've got our two beacons. Now if we look at our tag now and we go into the badges screen showing right door. Push the B2. Okay, now it's in my RF. So it's in the RF and when we bring it close to the beacon, boom, it goes into the right door. And then we move it to the other beacon, it's in the left door. And left door. Excellent. And then we put it out here, it will eventually move into, when I push the button, it's in the RF, my RF. One of the things I want to do now is show you the badge model. Okay, we're going to create a new badge model. And we're going to call it um, Fast Departure Model. In this case, we're going to have an LF hold time of zero, so that it relocates quickly, leaving the LF. 
Well, these parameters determine how the location behaves for a particular tag, and it tells it how long to stay in the IR until it jumps out into the RF. I'm not going to go through all the parameters here, but the parameter that currently concerns me is the LF hold. And, I'm, and now I'm going to go to my badge, there's Nancy, and associate it with the fast departure model so that when it leaves the LF, it leaves the LF quickly. Move it into the left door, and then as soon as I move it out, it will relocate out my RF. Okay, and you don't have to wait uh, five or 10 seconds for that to occur. So now we have essentially three locations. The RF location, when the tag is not under the LF, and the two LF locations. Let's uh, go into our setup and Let's do an alert, a location alert, that alerts when the tag is in the, this location. The, in your case, the right LF, all right? So we're gonna go into my alerts, my training alerts group. And by time, I'm gonna do a location alert. We could do an LPAS badge alert on the LF event, but now we wanna do a location alert because I wanna to do to clear when it leaves that location. So the input is going to be uh, the staff badges upon entry into the right door, regardless of the status. I want to close when conditions clear. In order to do outputs, of course, I want to send it to the clients. We're going to make a little message here that badge is at reader. In addition to that, I want to go to my readers and, and be able to access the inputs and outputs of these devices, right? So I'm going to go to readers, go to the right door, and say use inputs, and go to the outputs and use outputs. So I now can access the outputs of these devices. Let's do the same thing for the left. Use inputs and use outputs. The truth is I don't need the inputs yet. Now, when I go back to my alert, my location, and we're going to do at door alert, we're going to go to the outputs and turn on the right door green, no, red LED. LED. So when the tag enters in this field, this LED will turn red. And then when it leaves, it will then return to amber. Okay? And we will also get perhaps a little chime or something. Let's do a doorbell when it arrives at this location. Let's test the output. It turns red and we get the doorbell and clear the output. It goes back to amber. Okay. Now we're going to do it in live. So we take the, uh, the tag, all right? Notice that I'm in now left door, but when I move into the right door, I get the dong and I get the red LED indicator. When I move back into the left door, then the light, the LED returns to amber. To summarize the second portion of this basic setup tutorial, we added two LF beacons, right? And we defined an alert, a location alert, that triggers when our tag from the staff group enters the right door, and it closes when conditions clear, and as a result, it sets an output and plays some sounds. So you've gotten the basic background regarding adding beacons, and defining location alert. The previous tutorial, the part one of the basic setup, we learned more about button press alerts. In the advanced session, we'll go into overriding and escorting, taking one tag, perhaps a companion tag, such as a mother to a baby, or a staff tag to a monitored patient that can walk uh, and override a tag upon exit. That's about it for now. See you at the next tutorial.